the difference between compound interest. Those who don't know what it is, pay it. But those who know what it is, earn it. But recently, about a week ago, there's been an increase in the repo rate of South Africa. Now, that means that interest rates all across the country has increased. Before I can explain the compound interest effect and what compound interest is, we first need to take a look at what is interest. So, essentially, interest can be defined as money you pay to use other people's money. It's like rent for money. Let's say for example you want to buy something and you don't have enough money to buy that thing and you want to come to me and you borrow money from me, let's say 100 Rand. Then I say sure, but you must pay me 10 Rand for that. And you say okay, so eventually you'll have to pay me back 110 Rand and then I give you 100 Rand right now. You can go and buy the thing you want to buy you come back a week or two weeks later depending on our agreement and then you pay me back my 100 rand plus the 10 rand for letting me borrow you that money that 10 rand is interest very simple basic example of what interest is in practice it's a bit more complicated so how much interest do you pay now when you have a loan agreement quite often there would be a clause, a section about interest, and within this section there would, there would be terms and references such as interest is charged at prime plus two or at prime plus four. What this means is that they take the prime interest rate and add two percent or four percent or whatever the case may be. Now what is prime interest? Okay, let me explain. In South Africa, even banks, well, all over the world, even banks need to borrow money. Sometimes they sometimes need money. They don't always have all of it, even though they want us to believe that they have all the money. But when a bank needs to borrow funds, they have three sources that they can go to. The first source is they can borrow funds from people like you and me or companies. The second source is they can borrow from the South African Reserve Bank or if they're in a different country from the country's local reserve bank. The third option is they can borrow from other banks or other financial institute institutions. I haven't even had one yet. So when they borrow from an individual such as you and me, they pay us an if agreed upon interest rate. Now, there's a lot of ads all over the world, all over, yeah, all over the world, on TV, on the radio, on posters, in the newspapers, everywhere explaining or claiming grand interest rates. These interest rates are usually between maybe four and ten percent, if you're lucky. Now, this, these ranges that are very dependent on your investment type period and amount with which you invest with the, with the bank. Usually this means that the longer the, your investment period is, the higher the amount is and the more you've invested with them and also depending on in some cases your age, you will get a higher interest rate. What does that mean? In short, it means that if you are very lucky, you won't lose out that much. So the second source from where the banks can get their money from is the reserve bank and the reserve bank charges what is known as the repo rate the definition of a repo rate is the rate at which the central bank of a country lends money to commercial banks in the event of any shortfall of funds now the repo rate is used by monetary authorities to control inflation and currently inflation in south africa uh, the consumer price index, which is CPI, the official uh, inflation rate, is set at 5.1%. And the repo rate is set as 6.75. Now, the way that you use the repo rate to control inflation is if inflation goes up, they will increase the repo rate to make it more expensive for people to buy stuff and to make it much more uh, inviting 
for people to save money and if people can't afford to buy stuff or they pay less um, especially on credit or they save more so they buy less then the inflation rate tends to either stabilize or go down slightly and this will then have that impact of reducing the inflation rate so the country's monetary policy has or the monetary policy committee has a set target of inflation rate which is between four and six percent we're currently at 5.1 so we're happy i was surprised about the repo rate increase then there's another interest rate which is actually more something of an economic indicator is the south african benchmark overnight rate this is currently set at 6.710 percent and what this does is or the official definition says it's the volume weighted average interbank funding at a rate other than the current repo rate and the 20 highest rates paid by banks on an overnight and core deposits plus a 5% weight for funding through foreign exchange shops. Now this changes monthly. So that's South African benchmark overnight rate. It's just an indicator for more or less what the average was on a specific, as I say, overnight and core and core deposits. So it's, it's literally just an indicator of saying that this is an average interest rate for banks throughout the country. 6.71% slightly above the um, the inflation rate of 5.1 the CPI but it's still below the repo rate at 6.75 which means that based on this banks by paying you and me so little interest they essentially benefit from that little difference and they then get their interest cheaper and then there is the Johannesburg Interbank Average Rate. Now the JIBAR is literally a money market rate uh, which is used in South Africa. Um, typically that's the money market interest rate. Um, it's kind of like an interest rate if the banks were investing their money in the other banks. Kind of like what that is it's very similar to the south african benchmark overnight rate the only difference is that this is the johannesburg interbank average rate and it changes on a daily basis currently the jibar is sitting at about 7.16 percent now i wouldn't mind getting any interest or, or getting any financing such as a credit card or vehicle financing or home loan or anything like that at either one of Sabor or Jibor rates. That would be amazing. So that's interest, the topic of interest and a number of different kinds of rates in South Africa. Again, the South African benchmark overnight rate and the Jibor is literally just an economic indicator to tell you more or less what is the average rate for the different kind of investments. Bearing in mind, money market accounts are just short-term savings accounts. You have full-time access, whereas call accounts is more the kind of thing where you have to give a 32-day notice, as I mentioned in my How to Save Money this, this, this December video. Now, what's compound interest? Compound interest simply is interest on interest. Let's say you have made an investment you've made a deposit in a savings account you have interest there well before i start with an example so what is compound interest in short compound interest is interest on interest now how that works is when you have to pay me or when you when they calculate interest you will see in the reference of the loan agreement is interest will be levied at Prime plus four percent compounded monthly calculated daily when interest is calculated daily it means they calculate the amount of interest and they add that into a balance compounded means they add that interest amount that they've calculated daily over the last month and put that on your account if you have invested you earn that money if you have borrowed 
money. You pay that interest. What happens when the add that interest is your balance goes up, so the amount of interest added onto that balance goes up. If it's a loan, you pay more. If it's an investment, you earn more. And so on and so forth. And I can go on. If you've borrowed money, my recommendation is that you try and get an annual calculation and an annual compound. Meaning they calculate the interest on an average balance over on, on, on a yearly basis. They add that on monthly and the calculated monthly. If you earn interest, I would advise or you would usually go for something that says calculated and compounded daily. For that reason, you can then increase the amount of interest on your balance as much as you possibly could. Now, going for a 4.7% um, interest rate on a year on year, if it's compounded and calculated daily, it can go up to as well, it can add to as much as about 7 or 8% over a one year period. So a 4% increase, a 4.7% interest rate is not necessarily that bad. Then again, a personalized interest rate on your credit card for let's say 19 or 20%, not necessarily very good. Right. So that's interest and compound interest. And the topic of interest so I hope this video tells you not to go and spend money you don't have this December my name is Jacques Talliard thank you very much for watching I would very much appreciate it if you can hit the like button and if you would be so kind as to subscribe to this video you will be rewarded with similar kind of content over the next couple of years my name is Jacques Talliard this is Pretier Accounting Services and I hope you have a great weekend